Barigani, which means what's the news? How's your health? Happy Kwanzaa. Good evening. I'm Yakoya Muhammad. And today, we'd like to go over our yearly traditional celebration of Kwanzaa here at AARC at Booker, also known as the Booker Washington Center. Now, started in 1916, as legend tells us, but fully chartered in 1919, here at Booker, we've traditionally had a Kwanzaa celebration that we share throughout the community. You may be asking, what is Kwanzaa? Well, started in 1966, started by Dr. Molana Karanga, Kwanzaa was the celebration of our harvest, the celebration of our culture, celebration of our tradition. It's a black African American tradition that brings us together from the first day, which is December 26th, the day after Christmas, to the first day of the year, January 1st, which begins our new year. And this is tracked by seven principles. These seven principles are traditionally shown to us through a canara. It's our candle. It has our traditional flag, which is red, black, and green. And it also has the red, black, and green in its candles. Each one of these candles represents the seven principles of Kwanzaa, also known as the Nguzu Saba. You may be asking yourself, what else is on the table? How do I set it up? I'm glad you asked. Well, traditionally, we have gifts. Here at Booker Washington Center, here we are in the historic Chuck Jefferson Library. One of the gifts we would like to give you is the book of knowledge, the book of reading. So one of the good things you can do for your family is start the year off with something that would inspire them. It could be books, it could be arts and craft, it could be music. Something that's personal to you or your family that represents our culture that will start you off good for the new year. You may be looking at the harvest. This represents the fruit, represents the corn. It represents the harvest, what we call the mozoa which is a corn harvest that is traditionally put in any Kwanzaa setting that is used in your tradition when you're starting your celebration. All right, let's get back to this canara. When you start your Kwanzaa celebration, many people start their Kwanzaa celebration with a rites of passage or a ceremony in which you do what is called libations. We won't be doing libations today because we're traditionally or just simply focusing on what are the meaning of Kwanzaa. But feel free to start off your celebration with the libation in which we bring in the spirits of our ancestors. We ask our ancestors for the permission to stand on their shoulders, to bring in their customs, to bring in their values, to bring in their tradition, but also to remember their energy, their spirit, and their memory. This is traditionally done with a cup of water, where you have what's called libation, and you have a living plant, a living tree. And when you do those libations, when you do that tradition, you're calling on the ancestors from your ancient past to your present, and you're bringing on the current issues, issues of the future. Like I said, we won't be doing libations in this presentation. We'll specifically be talking about the Kwanzaa celebration, dealing with the candles and the seven principles. Let's go ahead and get it started. The first candle you see is the largest candle in the middle, and it represents the first day of Kwanzaa. We call that the Swahili word umoja, which means unity. It's a principle and that day where you gather the unity, whether it's within yourself, your family, your block, your neighborhood, your community. It's a principle that's so important that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the most powerful weapon that you and I have in our community is not a gun, it's not a knife, it's the unity of our people. It's more powerful than an atomic bomb. So we have to always start our tradition off with umoja, unity. And that started with the black candle. So by the time you may see this video, you may be on day two, day three, day four, day five. It doesn't matter. Begin to start it, but you always begin with the candle in the middle, the black candle, and that's umoja. That's unity. That's the first day. And you can practice some type of activity with your families, your friends, that brings about that principle so that you and I can internalize it as we begin our quest for the new year. Now, there's red to my left and there's green to my right. And you start with Kuji Chagalia on the second day. Kuji Chagalia, the Swahili word, which means self-determination. We spend that day learning about ourselves, a knowledge of self. And so on the second day, we light the candle to represent Kuji Chagalia.
And that brings in the observation of our second principle, self-determination. Now I want to go back real briefly. I forgot to mention the drums. So yes, the drums are a very important part of our Kwanzaa celebration. It also brings in the spirit of our ancestors. It brings in the rhythm of our people, the heartbeat of our people. Many of the things that we'll talk about today, you can incorporate in your own Kwanzaa celebration when you practice it throughout the year. But the second principle, as he was talking about, is Kuji Chagalia. That is a principle of self-determination, a knowledge of ourself, learning about our ancestors, learning about our past, learning about our true history. Dr. Molana Karenga wanted us to know more than about our sojourn here in America, so he named the celebration with the Swahili word that connects us to our ancestors in the great motherland, in the continent of Africa, and even beyond Africa. So it's a great day to really learn a knowledge of ourselves. What makes us great kings, doctors, scientists, lawyers? Not only our sojourn here in America, but throughout the world. So our second principle, start with the red candle, is Chikuji Chagalia. On the third day, we practice Ujima. So you would light the green candle. Give me one second. That didn't light as good as we would like it to. Okay. This candle may require really some ujima, <laughs> which is collective work and responsibility. You know, we like to talk about the 99 to 1 rule. It's often said that many people in the dominant society can disagree on 99 things. Our white counterparts can disagree on 99 things, but come together and unify on one in Congress to get that one thing done. But in our community, we can agree on 99 things and disagree on one thing and separate and fall out. Well, we know if we're going to have unity, we have to have collective work and responsibility. Unity does not mean uniformity. Uniformity is when we all have the same shirt, the same pants, the same jersey on, and we're uniformed in one unified manner. But our collective work and responsibility when we're talking about our unity means that I respect your uniqueness. You respect my uniqueness. We respect all of the different gifts and talents that you and I may possess, but we bring it together and we work in a collective manner. And the best manner is to have good collective righteous competition, where we cheer each other on for the betterment of our family, for the betterment of our community, and for the betterment of our nation. And so we strive to have Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Now we just alternate to the fourth day. And the fourth day is Ujjama. Hopefully this light's better. There we go. That's much better. <laughs> Ujjama. Or some people say Ujjama. Pronunciations may differ. I like to keep all of it lit, so there we go. We'll go back to it. Ujjama. That is our cooperative economics. The pooling of our resources understanding that we are not a community that has a high gross domestic uh, uh, product or we have a high value of money coming in and out of our community where it stays. Now it's true, the dollar comes into our community, but within six, seven or eight hours, it's going right back out. What we want to do is practice cooperative economics, that that dollar stays in our community more than just six or 10 hours. But how about a day? How about 10 days? How about 17 days? So we take on the mantra, shop with your sister or your brother before you shop with another. That's what makes Booker Washington Center the hub of black thought, black education, and black practice here in, America, uh, in Rockford because we've been here for so long. And we want this to be a hub where all of our organizations, all of our communities can practice cooperative economics. That we do things such as the Booker Fest, where we showcase things throughout the community as arts and craft, musicians, different community organizations, different music groups, different youth groups, that they all can share and sell their products, that we bring that dollar back within our community. So we're practicing Ujama. Well, you don't have to just do it during the Book of Fest, even though we really would like you to. We can practice it through every month. One big, huge session out of the month where we're traveling to some location that we're practicing that ability to have our dollar 
Help out our great black doctors. Help out our great black attorneys. Help out our great black hair care providers. Help out our black, black, black institutions where we see that dollar traveling throughout our community in a collective manner in which each one of us can help the other where they may be short this time, it may be stronger, it may be taller the next time. So we want to practice Ujamo. That's cooperative economics. Now, our fifth principle is Nia, which means purpose. We often like to say, blessed is he or she who finds their purpose in life. That is a journey that many of us are still on to this day. But the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad also said, one of the things that's an indicator of us finding our purpose in life is what we most, what we like to do the most. Wherever it is he or she likes to do the most, and we do it naturally, we do it cheerfully. It doesn't take pressure. It doesn't take a lot of pulling. We can do it as soon as we wake up. We can do it in our sleep. Most likely that may be our purpose in life. But we have to have purpose in everything that we do. We can't wake up without purpose. So Nia is where we focus as a family. We focus as an individual. What's my purpose for today? What's my purpose for living? Some of us have a purpose to go to the gym. Some of us have a purpose to eat better. Some of us may have a purpose to help someone in need. Regardless of what that purpose is, we want to strengthen it on that day. We want to find that purpose, that reason, that goal, that inspiration, that strategy for living. It's part of these our Nguzu Sapa because many of our young people now are walking around aimless and without a purpose. So one of the beauties of Kwanzaa is we like to promote this to our young people and that our young people know you may not have found it yet, but we're striving. We hopefully on this day and with this principle, we can begin to execute and find our purpose. So that is our fifth day, Nia, purpose. And now we go to our sixth day. Now each one of these candles started off, lit, and then went out. So maybe they want to double it. All right. There we go. Our sixth day, Kaumba. Creativity. This is a beautiful day that you can do with your community event or you can do with your home where you do some art, some dance, some music, but creativity. That's the highest form of expression in our community. Yes, we memorize a lot of things. Yes, we study a lot of things. But it's when we're able to express our creative joy, our creative gift, which the Creator has given to us that begins to allow us to see what beauty this sister has, what beauty that brother has, that some of us may not have never known. So a real good thing to do is to have a talent show that day. And you can express the creativity. The talent show may come out in the form of art. It may come out in the form of music. It may come out in the form of poetry. It may come out in the form of dance. But that's a day in which we dedicate to our creativeness. We're using our kaumba to be creative as a people. Our people have always taken the little, put a little bit of creativity to it, and made it larger, and made it the best. This is a beautiful principle that we all can practice. And it's a tough principle because you're practicing it on New Year's Eve. It's the last day of the year. And so we start that year off, I mean we end the year off with creativity, and then we go into our last day, the seventh day, faith. And that is our Imani. Imani means faith. And so it's always good to start the year off. Reflection. Some devotion. Some prayer. But to increase our faith. So we light the last of our candles. On the last day, many people have a big, huge Kwanzaa celebration. Like we often have here at Book. You may be wondering, why am I coming to you now through a camera? Because unfortunately, due to what we all are experiencing, a pandemic, COVID has not allowed us to touch and see each other the way we normally do in our Kwanzaa celebration. So because we're experiencing the spike, 
we're doing a very brief Kwanzaa presentation so that you can still experience us and hopefully you can see us through your devices, through your television, through your phones, and hopefully this will be just a starter to inspire you all to do at home what we normally do here at the Book of Washington Center. But these are our seven principles, and the last one being faith. Hopefully you and I can have a new year in 2022 in which faith guides us, faith leads us. Wherever it is that our faith discipline or our faith tradition, that it at least becomes stronger, that we pray for those who may not have made it into the new year, those who may have been afflicted severely with COVID, those who have gotten over COVID, those who are sick and shut in, those of our young people who may have had mental issues dealing with a pandemic, a very rare pandemic, those who have been dealing with just some of the toughness of financial issues during this time, whatever it may have been that caused you and I to go through a tough time, we ask that faith to restore us. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. We want this year to be one that we can show that our faith has gotten us through the dark times. As a people, we've often sung the song, we've come this far by faith. Leaning on that creator, whatever higher power you have had to get us through our tough times. So these are our seven principles of Kwanzaa. We'll recap. Umoja, it's the black candle. It's the one that you start off with, which is unity. Then you go to the second principle, the second day, Kujichagulia, self-determination. We go to the third day, which is Ujima, our collective work and responsibility. Fourth day is Ujima, Ujama, cooperative economics. Our fifth day, Mia, purpose. Then our sixth day, Kaumba, creativity. And we begin our year off with faith, Imani. These are our seven principles called the Nguzu Saba. And these are the seven principles that Dr. Molana Karenga wanted us to start our year off with as we celebrate Kwanzaa. So as we conclude, we know this is real brief. Remember, you can have drum, you can have music, you can even have food. You can have whatever it is that brings your family together. Many dress in traditional African tradition, African robe. Some have kente cloth. You can decorate your home with traditional African art. Of course, our books of reading and our fruit. And this sets the atmosphere for a beautiful year as we celebrate and honor Kwanzaa. So it was a great honor and privilege for me to do a very brief explanation of Kwanzaa for AARC at Booker, and I hope that this at least gives you some motivation to start beginning to observe Kwanzaa for yourself. So as once again, my name is Jacoya Muhammad. I want to thank our wonderful director at Booker, Joyce Higgins, for allowing me this opportunity to at least come to you in this brief moment of time. I hope this was a brief but good enough explanation for you for Kwanzaa, and once again, Abari Ghani.